Hello and welcome to the 12th episode of Fintech Monthly. As we celebrate our first birthday, we're here at Borders and Capital's King's Cross HQ and we have a bumper load of news, including investment updates, UBS's blockchain project, analysis of Berlin's fintech scene and Barclays' first steps into the world of fashion. Zettel, Market Invoice and Prodigy Finance have all raised big money in the last four weeks. Point of sale pioneers iZettel raised 60 million euros in a round led by Intel Capital and Zook Capital. iZettel are going after the SME market with Carl Richard Hagman declaring that the company want to build a financing service that is completely tailored to the needs of small businesses. Market Invoice have raised 6 million pounds from North Zone to broaden its product set. Prodigy Finance have raised over $100 million. The majority of this funding came from financial institutions such as Credit Suisse, with Balderton Capital also leading a Series A round into the company. Prodigy Finance's platform enables private investors to fund the MBA studies of international students who wouldn't have been able to afford the education without funding support. Prodigy will use this money to help get even more students into business school. Following the announcement of their plans for a settlement coin alliance, Swiss bank UBS are leading the way when it comes to giving blockchain technology a practical application in the financial services industry. UBS's new settlement coin uses blockchain technology to enable financial institutions to trade and settle real-world financial instruments such as stocks and bonds. Alex Batlin, Director of Technology Innovation at UBS, explained that the attraction of using the blockchain instead of traditional methods is that there is no middle or back office and no registry, so clearly there will be a major impact on costs. UBS's settlement coin isn't the only idea to be cooked up at their cryptocurrency innovation lab, which is based at Canary Wharf's level 39. UBS also announced that they're working with BNY Mellon on other blockchain projects. Watch this space. As over £100 million has now been raised on Crowdcube, I'm here with Commercial Director Matt Cooper. So Matt, what's next for the world's leading equity crowdfunding site, now this huge milestone's in the bag? Well, we're super exciting. It was a, a great milestone to hit uh, just last week. Uh, I think one of the exciting things for me was that uh, whilst we've done £100 million, uh, in uh, the four and a half short years we've been around, over £50 million of that was in the last six months. That's really been as a result of seeing more and more million pound plus raises, which we're showing to the crowd. These are tending to be VC backed, and our crowd of 200,000 investors are finding those pitches particularly compelling. Um, never before have they been offered the opportunity to invest alongside uh, VCs like Index and Episode One and Balderton Capital. Um, we're looking further afield, uh, and we're looking slightly closer to home over the next few months. Um, we're very, very interested in the Manchester region uh, and what we're going to do up there. Um, there's a whole host of exciting growth businesses in the north of England, which we're looking to better support. Uh, and obviously we're looking to the US as well and, and what our next move is going to be over there. Neil Murray, founder of the Nordic Web, recently carried out some statistical analysis on the amount of money raised between Berlin and London and found out that the German capital doesn't fare as badly as many would have you believe, even beating London in some areas. With these new statistics ringing in our ears, we caught up with Richard Gould of Rag Lawrence Graham & Co and asked him what makes that region so special and if London should be looking over its shoulder. In Berlin, there is an amazing mix right now. You've got VC investment coming in, you've got relatively cheap software developers available, and Berlin itself is a real cool hub, and it's just drawing in some amazing people, and there is an amazing, fantastic entrepreneurial spirit there. However, it isn't London. It does not sit on one of the world's greatest financial hubs. It doesn't interact with the innovation centres in the banks and it doesn't have the benefit of the light bureaucracy and regulation that we have here in the UK. So it's one to watch, but for my money, London's still going to be the world hub in Europe. For more from Richard Gould, check out his regular posts on techcitynews.com. Stockflare became the first fintech company to gain an investment pledge from the London Co-Investment Fund ahead of their Crowdcube campaign. The London Co-Investment Fund was founded and is run by 
funding London and Capital Enterprise and raised £25 million from the Mayor of London's Growing Places Fund. The fund co-invests in seed rounds between £250 and £1 million. However, Boris isn't making these investment decisions himself. The deals are led by specially selected co-investment partners. Stockflare was created as founder Shane Leonard was annoyed that fund managers got paid even if their funds were performing badly. He thought that investors could do just as good a job if they were given the tools themselves. Step forward, Stockflare. Fund managers, watch out. Barclays have joined forces with Lyle and Scott to create the contactless jacket, which is a stylish coat which enables users to pay for stuff by swiping their cuff. The fashionistas at Lyle and Scott have designed an aperture in the cuff of their latest jacket into which a Barclays BPay chip can be inserted. The chip can be linked to any UK registered Mastercard or Visa card. In addition to the clever cuff, the coat boasts a drawstring cord on the hood, side pockets, a branded zip and a leather patch logo. Fashionable and stylish. Before you rush off to your local jacket emporium, be aware that the BPay chip inside your cuff will cease to work in two years. After this point, the wearer won't be able to make any more contactless purchases. So bear that in mind if you don't want your fashion choices to affect your purchasing habits in 2017. That's all we've got time for in this episode of FinTech Monthly. I've been Ben Goldsmith, and thanks for watching.